Blessings to every one of you. We continue with our study in the book, or better said, the Epistle of Jude. And as an introduction, in we see in this verse that Jude continues to warn us. Uh, he continues to warn us, the church, about those false teachers who were uh, coverly infiltrated into the congregation to twist the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. And last week we studied and learned that God does not overlook uh, sin and he never will overlook it. And he put as an example for us, the people of Israel who came out of Egypt or better and better said they did not enter into the promised land. They were left prostrated in the desert due to their unbelief and their murmuring or complaining. The only ones that entered, as we learned, were Joshua and Caleb. And today we will see verse 6, which corresponds to today's study. And it says, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. And here in verse 6 that we uh, began this um passage is speaking to us about these angels who did not guard their dignity or their proper domain. Jude gives us the two examples. As we mentioned, the first one was the people of Israel who came out of Egypt and they were left prostrated in the desert. And verse 6, which we just read, and it gives us the example in the invisible world. In other words, the uh, angels, spiritual beings. And here it speaks to us about angels who did not keep their dignity or proper domain and we will take more information from this from uh, second peter chapter 2 verse 4 and it says for if god did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment now i want us to notice the following how the fall of Satan affected in the matter that, or in the way that it not just affected Adam and Eve when they fell, but it affected even the visible and invisible world. And if we go to the book of Job chapter 4, and it's chapter 4, 18 and 19 and look at what it says if he puts no trust in his servants or his angels if he charges his angels with error how much more those who dwell in houses of clay whose foundations is in the dust who are crushed before a moth referring to us humans who are inhabiting a house of clay the foundations of our body was the dust of this earth that's why it is called the house of clay. As you can see, we are in a constant spiritual battle, in a battle, in a fight against the forces of evil whose only mission is to make humanity fall. And it affected creation in every way. And sin affected God's creation in the invisible and invisible realm. The first rebellion originated in the heavens by Satan when he, the protecting cherubim, decided to leave his place and to take God's place. Angels are creation of God, but they decided to go away from God. Now, Satan rebelled and convinced one third part of the angels to follow him in that rebellion. And now those angels are known as the demons, as their leader being Satan, and Satan means the adversary of God. He will always be against God, and he will always be against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church is us. The enemy of God becomes, when we accept the Lord, and we become part of the family of God, the enemy of God becomes our enemy as well. So now, the first mention of the fallen angels is mentioned in the book of Isaiah in chapter 14. And we're going to go there and look at it. Isaiah chapter 14. And we're going to see this. How the fall of Satan 
happened, and we've mentioned it previously in other studies, but we're going to uh, put it all in the context to understand what is it that Jude is speaking to us in his epistle. And so it says in verse 12, it says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How are you cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Look at the heart, the rebellious heart of Satan uh, who originated his own rebellion. And he went up, he was taking care of Eden as we will find uh, in Ezekiel a little further. And Ezekiel says that this protecting cherub was in Eden to protect the habitation where man was going to inhabit. But one day he said, I will ascend. Uh, he thought about it. He decided it in his heart. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And so the first attempt uh, before going up to God was to exalt himself above the stars of God. And the stars are uh, considered the place where the angels inhabit. So he first went to convince them to follow him. And he convinced a third part of the angels and those are now the demons. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. What was his objective? I will ascend above the clouds, height of the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. He wanted to go up to the Shekinah glory of God. In other words, I am going to dethrone you and I will sit and reign because I will be like the most high. And so this is what he said. The first mention of the fallen angel, angels uh, is, is here in Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. And that is the first mention, I repeat. And if we go to the last book of the Bible now in chapter 12, so book of Revelation, uh, chapter 12, we see how he convinced the third part of the angels in verse four, his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And so this confirms what Isaiah is saying when he said, uh, I will ascend into the heavens above the stars of God. And so he went where the celestial atmosphere or an angelical atmosphere uh, to convince him. And he dragged a third part of these uh, stars or these angels. And it was to um, go against the throne and the government of God. And he wanted to be like the Most High. I suggest that you read Ezekiel uh, chapter 12. Uh, and it says that he became prideful uh, because of his beauty. He became prideful. And that is the most difficult thing to to uproot from our heart the pride because that is the seed that is the the sting of the serpent that operates in the heart that is not regenerated and even knowing christ we have to battle against that pride until we become like christ pride is a satanic spirit that we should abolish we should completely have no relationship uh, to pride uh, pride because of who I am, because of the accomplishments, because of what I know, even in the spiritual realm or area, the pride comes in because I'm better than the other, more spiritual or with greater or lesser knowledge, etc., etc. Even of having nothing, we hear the words, oh, I've got nothing, but my pride lifts up my head, etc., etc. So beloved in Christ, let's see that the heart of Satan and his motivations will always be pride. That is why we should have into account this, that pride is what motivated him to attempt to take the throne of God. If he's there in authority, well, I could be an authority too. And he had power and he continues to have powers, but he is not the all powerful as our God is the almighty, all powerful. 
So the fall of Satan and his demons is also mentioned by the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, where it says, and so he's testifying, Jesus, he saw it, glory to God. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Satan and his demons were judged and condemned. They are already condemned to the place of darkness, but they are not jailed just yet. Now, Jude mentions some angels that are in prisons and Peter mentions also mentions uh, angels that are in prisons of darkness and that are designated, reserved, separated for the great day of judgment. Now that is another category of demons, but I wanted to begin with the root of where the demons come from. And the root is uh, in the attempt uh, against God's government that God or that Satan try to dethrone God. And um, and so this is the uh, beginning of this demonic, satanic rebellion. And so we see here that the Lord saw all of this because this speaks to us also about his pre-existence before he was conceived, before he took the form of a human. Jesus, the Lord Jesus already existed next to his father and he saw that rebellion and he saw also when Satan fell like lightning from heaven. Hallelujah. What better testimony than our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Now, the ones Jude speaks about, these are not jailed. They are, as the Apostle Peter says, that they are uh, jailed. Now, Paul speaks to us also about a demonic hierarchy. And we're going to read this in the book of Ephesians in chapter 6. And if we can go over there together, go with me to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read in chapter 6 and verse 12. And Paul tells us, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So that's one of the categories or hierarchies. Uh, of the demonic hierarchy and the first hierarchy that is mentioned is this one principalities against powers the second one against the rulers of darkness of this age the third one and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places the fourth one and here the apostle paul tells us where they inhabit and it says that they inhabit in the celestial realm realm so when the Lord said that he saw Satan fall like a ray, it is in the celestial realm. Uh, they are not in jail. They are in those regions uh, in the heavenlies operating to destroy the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and to destroy our spiritual life. And that is why the Apostle Paul says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not against humans. It's not about you know, beating each other up and everything else with the ones who does wrong to us or to contend and fight and I'm going to let you have it. No, this battle, this wrestle is not carnal. It is against these spiritual beings of wickedness that one day were angels of the Lord because he created them. But they decided to follow Satan when he filled himself with Pride because of his beauty, maybe because of his wisdom, because angels have wisdom. They have a knowledge that now it's no longer a, a true knowledge. Um, it is not a holy wisdom or holy knowledge, but rather they use that knowledge for wickedness. And here we don't know the reason why those angels that were um, jailed uh, were put in prison. Uh, some events that make us think that this is what it's about and we'll mention it in just a few moments but what we do know uh, is that how tremendous is the effect of the fall of satan and of sin and of his rebellion it is tremendous it was devastating uh, that to this day it has affected not only man when he went to eden he made that first couple fall but sin affected all of creation everything uh, the visible world the invisible world and all of creation everything that god has created has been affected by sin and romans 8 21 to 23 the apostle paul says 
that we are waiting for our mortal body to be um, delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And it says, for we know that the whole creation groans and labor with birth pains together until now. Look at the animal kingdom. Look at the vegetable kingdom. Look at the cruelty in the animal kingdom when God created animals for men to take care of them. So look at how everything has been affected. Um, you know, it breaks my heart when I see the love of animals and how they express their love without words and their tears when they are suffering and they don't speak, but they were not created for man to mistreat them. And in the same manner as human beings, we were not created for us to mistreat and humiliate our, our each other mutually or for the man to mistreat his wife or the woman to mistreat her husband but sin but sin beloved in christ distorted our emotions our feelings and only through christ we can become what christ says that we are but this is a process beloved and it is out of our own will and yesterday i was looking at a passage and um I think they presented it on TikTok and and the man was saying, do you want to have a perfect woman? And it seems that it was a men's conference because all of the men, you know, you could hear their their deep voices saying, yes, of course, we want the perfect woman. And he said, then love her, take care of her, value her and listen to her and attend to her and give to her what she needs. Make her feel that she's the most valuable uh, person for you. And there was a tremendous silence there. And, you know, I don't want to get into that subject, but, you know, when there's marital problems, it's always that blaming game, right? One points the finger to the other. Why? Because that is part of our fallen nature, to not admit our own errors. But I liked uh, what I heard for one reason, because he mentioned the scripture. God, uh, he charged uh, his man to take care or the man to take care of his wife so it the responsibility is for everybody but it falls uh, greater on the man and I don't want to get into that subject but I want us to see how the sin of Satan affected everything everything that God created that is why the Apostle Paul says because creation itself um uh, also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Because we are redeemed. We are saved. Our soul has been rescued from condemnation. But our mortal uh, body is going to go to the dust of the earth. And its redemption will be until Christ comes for his church. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And then those of us, if we are still alive, we will be transformed. This body needs to be transformed this body is mortal and it's going to it's going to suffer that transformation to be an immortal body because that is the plan of God. That was the initial plan of God for those that say, uh, why did God allow uh, for this such person to die? My mom or my dad, you know, that was not God's plan. The plan of God was that we would live with an immortal body as Adam had, but he chose to have a mortal body. He chose to die. And so as a consequence, he dragged all of us, all of humanity. And so as far as the angels, going back to that subject, that were jailed or put in prison, some mentioned the book of Enoch, mentioning that these angels who did not uh, guard their dignity, um, they mentioned that the um, the sons of God united themselves to the sons of men. And from there, the race of the Nephilims came. And a lot is spoken about this. And there's videos about it. There's videos that speak about uh, the book of Enoch. And they mention uh, these angels and, uh, and these angels that took these women. But I want to clear something up that, um, that it will be left very um, clear that the book of Enoch is not... Uh, an inspired book uh, by the Holy Spirit, and it did not qualify to be uh, in the canon of um, of the authorized books of the Bible. And um, it's a, it's an apocryphal book, and it is not authorized to be part of the Bible. And it could be taken as a historical book, but not as an inspired book of the Bible. And so let's remember when the Lord Jesus um, did not expose to us 
um, about the fallen angels, it is that it's because our focus should not be so much in Satan, but our focus should be in salvation. And the word tells us, uh, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil. So your job is to submit yourself to God. Do not fall into the temptation. Let's uh, follow the counsel of the word of God. And when we submit to God, we will have Satan and the demons very far away from us and we will have no problems. And so look at the emphasis of the scripture. It will always be salvation and not the works of the enemy. And though the scriptures warn us against him and speak to us about the armor of God so we can protect ourselves, but the best protection for us is to be at the feet of Christ. Amen. But, you know, uh, sadly, uh, in the last days, uh, it, people have itchy ears to hear it fables and stories but as long as we keep the message of redemption we are safe to arrive to those celestial mansions into the presence of God and so let's see what Genesis says in chapter 6 the scripture says in chapter 6 verse 1 and it says now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them it's speaking uh, about the daughters of the men it's not speaking that were sons of God uh, after the fall, it doesn't say that Adam uh, uh, was the son of God. He was a creation. He was a creature of God um, with the knowledge and intimacy with God, but he lost it. So it says, verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And so they didn't take one. They took all the ones they wanted. And verse 3, it says, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh yet his days shall be 120 years so days were shortened here and there were giants and the earth and in those days and also afterward when the sons of god came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown and then the lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the flood came as a consequence. So look that it was not a natural um, uh, combination. It says um, that it was a combination of the angels and man and Job mentions them as well. And so we don't know exactly. These are isolated scriptures that uh, we take them into consideration uh, but our focus is not to um, pass as, you know, know-it-alls and that we know everything about the kingdom of darkness because the most important is to know the kingdom of light and walk towards that kingdom of light. And so the only reality, the only truth uh, regarding is this, is that all of the word of God is inspired and its purpose is to guide us into salvation. And that is the reason why Jesus Christ came to save us and rescue us from the kingdom of darkness to translate us into his beautiful radiant light. And he came to undo, to destroy the works of the enemy. So what Jude is exposing to us is the reality that God is not going to overlook sin. He dealt with the sin of man and he dealt with the sin of the angels that did not keep their dignity. And he will continue to deal with our sin so that through Christ, we will proceed to repentance and thereby escape the judgment and the condemnation, which is eternal. The final destiny of the angels. Let's see. So that you can see that it's not so important to know about the angels. It's nice to know and to have a base, but our focus should be Christ. Amen. Amen. The angels were already judged, sentenced. The angels that followed Satan were already judged. For them, there is no more opportunity of salvation. They took the decision. They made the decision and immediately the judgment was executed against them. Therefore, for them, there is no hope. God dealt with the sin of these angels that did not keep their dignity and God will continue to deal with our sin. Amen. And the only way 
to bring the solution to our sin is to come to the feet of Christ and to live for him. And the des final destiny of the angels, we're going to go look for it in the book of Revelation so we can get the biblical answer. And so we're going to go to chapter 20 of the book of Revelation and we're going to go to verse 10 to see this. And the scripture says, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So here we see beginning with their leader. It says that he is going to be cast, thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. And uh, here we also see the beast and the false prophet and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So this is the final destiny of Satan and all of his followers. The demons themselves know their final destiny. In the book of Mark chapter 5, verse 5 or verse 6, it says, When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. So we're seeing this and it's in the context that the Lord Jesus came to the region of Gadara and he met two Gadarenes that were possessed. And they came to his encounter crying out with loud voice. And in verse 5, it says, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. So uh, it completely possessed. Now in verse 6, again, it says, When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, so it looks like um, there was a couple of demon possessed uh, once, but one of them bowed and he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, the son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. So see here that the demons already knew that they were going to be tormented. And that is why it says, and they know who Jesus is. The demons know they have knowledge of Jesus. Now in Matthew, uh, it also says uh, the same passage is mentioned in Matthew and Luke. And Matthew, it says, um, because they knew. And they said, Matthew 8, 29, it says, And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have you to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? So here in the scripture, it says that they knew they were going to be tormented. And Revelation 20 says that they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so that judgment was decreed against them. And their sentence is the lake of fire and brimstone. They knew who Jesus was. The demons know who Jesus is. And they said, I repeat to you, why do you come to torment us before time? So what this reveals is the knowledge that the demons have. For them, it is very clear that the day of their eternal torment will come. It's very clear to them. They know it. And we're going to go once again back to the book of Jude. And we're going to go to verse 6. And we're almost going to finish the study for today. But let's go back once again to the book of Jude. And we are in verse 6. And we are going to emphasize this one more time. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode or dwelling place, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. This is another judgment. We saw that the first judgment for Satan and his demons was in the heavens and that they are conscious that they have been judged and that they know that the time will come in which they will be eternally in the place where they belong. But here, there are some angels who are in prisons and they're reserved in, in chains, in everlasting chains, for the judgment of the great day. God did not forgive the demons, those fallen angels who have their final destiny. We already know this in the lake of fire and sulfur. It's very clear to us. Their final destiny will uh, be 
for an eternal torment. Now, beloved in Christ, we're going to see the fall of man now. Man fell. Man fell because of a tempter. The angels decided, in spite of the knowledge that they had of God, they decided to follow Satan. That is the great difference. That is why God did not forgive them immediately. They were judged. They knew God. They had knowledge of God. And in spite of that knowledge that is superior, uh, their knowledge is superior to ours. It, uh, that's why it says that God created man a little lower than the angels. And their uh, knowledge uh, is greater because they stood before the throne of God. It is superior to ours. So having that knowledge out of their own decision, they decided to follow Satan uh, for the offer of power uh, and taking dominion over the celestial kingdom and the and the earthly kingdom. And by overthrowing God, they pretended and attempted to be like God. And I want to see here... Um, that it was precisely this same offer that made the first couple fall. With a difference that it was not Adam and Eve's idea of wanting to be like God's. It was not their own idea. It was Satan's idea. It was the proposal that came from Satan, the tempter. They fell because of a tempter, because of a deceiver. And Eve identified him as a deceiver when Eve said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And so they fell because of a temptation, because of a deceit. But the angels fell because of their own decision. Knowing God, they decided to take the offer that Satan offered them. That is why instantly they were judged and uh, cast from the kingdom of God. And now they are in the atmosphere, our atmosphere. And man and woman decided from their own will to accept the offer of the enemy. And as a consequence, all of humanity fell under the dominion of sin. Let it be clear, beloved in Christ, that men and women, we all have a free will. God made us with a free will. And out of our own free will, we can decide to follow Jesus and be free from sin, destined to an eternal life or to follow Satan operating in rebellion against God, destined to eternal fire, which is the eternal death. As far as these angels, so we, uh, so I don't leave you guys in the limbo. Uh, as far as these angels, it is believed by what Peter says that they are jailed. They are imprisoned. And we're going to see a scripture in Revelation chapter 9 that can give us a little bit more of revelation, understanding about these angels, which we don't know what category they belong to. Paul speaks to us about four categories of angels in Ephesians, or four hierarchies. Now, the angels that did not keep their dignity, uh, but the, and the scripture says that they took women to themselves. It could be this category of angels that are jailed. Maybe they were more terrible than all the ones that are on the loose still. But these are jailed nonetheless because Revelation tells us they are destructors. They have a power of destruction that is very strong. So let's go to Revelations chapter 9 and we're going to look in, uh, see verse 14. And it says, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So see here that in the time of the tribulation, in the final times where the church is no longer going to be here, that the true Christians, we will no longer be on this earth in the time that the Lord will pour of his judgments over a humanity that rejected salvation. And he will pour out his judgments over Satan who will be governing this world. And it will be his attempt since since he went up to dethrone God, supposedly. His intention was to govern the heavens and to govern the earth and for him to sit on the sides of the mountain uh, where the Lord Jesus is reigning in his second coming when he comes to establish his millennial kingdom here on this earth. 
uh, the Lord Jesus is going to sit in the Mount of Olives in the new temple that is going to be built. Not the temple. Jesus is not going to sit in the temple uh, that they're preparing right now, which is known as the third temple. Because the Lord Jesus is not going to sit in the, that temple because that is where the Antichrist is going to sit. Jesus is not going to sit where the son of Satan is going to sit. They're going to uh, build the temple next to the um, mosque of Omar. And that is where it is believed that the temple of Solomon was first built. But it turns out that that's not the exact place. Uh, but in the times that the Lord Jesus sits on the throne, he is going to have a new temple and he's going to reign for a thousand years there. And so in that time of the great tribulation where the judgment of God, the 21 judgments that are going to fall on this humanity because this is a war against Satan, against the Antichrist, against the false prophet and all of humanity uh, who has believed him, they're going to suffer the consequences of believing the lie and not accepting the truth of the gospel that Jesus Christ offers us. So it says in that time that uh, it is said it says, um, then the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And so let's remember that uh, Paul speaks to us about them. And it says here, verse 15. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and a month and a year were released to kill a third of mankind. Look at that power that they have very destructive. And so God uh, has them reserved for that tremendous day of judgment for this world. So logically his or their destiny will be the same one as all of those angels um, just as their leader, eternally tormented. So as you can see, beloved in Christ, the way to protect ourselves to not be deceived by these evil forces is to have the knowledge of God, to live for him and to know his perfect will for our security, our spiritual security. We have to know God and not just say, I know God, I believe in God, but to know his perfect will and live in that perfect will. Through his word, we can do this because the word is the lamp unto our feet and that lamp brights up our way and is going to help us not to fall. So a light unto our feet and a light unto our path, that spiritual light. Christ is the light. He is the way that we will walk with him and that we will do the will of our Lord Jesus Christ and that we will live according to that will. Let's follow the advice that the Apostle Paul gives to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, where it says that we should be alert so that Satan uh, should not take advantage of us and that we will not be ignorant to his devices and let's not fall into his deceiving and lying offers, but that we will walk in the light of the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord warns us and prepares us and it prepares us, it, it readies us. He left us with spiritual armor, spiritual weapons. They're not carnal. And these are to overcome um, the powers of darkness. If the church does not arm themselves, is the church, if the church is distracted, if the church is careless, negligent, well, we will be victims to the devices of Satan. But if we equip ourselves with a spiritual weapons, prayer, fasting, word, obedience, submission, well, we're not going to have that problem. Why? Because we will always live in victory. Because the Lord Jesus said that we are more than overcomers. And if the enemy shakes uh, some Christians, it's... Uh, uh, because we're negligent and many times because of our own rebellion and the Lord allows it so that through that, uh, through those shakings, well, we will recognize our sin and that we will come to the feet of Christ. So see how in Christ we are safe, believing in the Lord Jesus, that he died to overcome sin, 
sin in us, the sin of humanity, and the one who ab- accepts him as their savior, he died to overcome Satan. You know, Satan really laughed and he thought that it was all over and that Jesus man was, it was over with him and that he was left sovereign in this world. But surprise, when he saw the Lord Jesus taking, snatching the keys of death and Hades from him. And so look at the power, the empire of Satan, the Lord Jesus conquered it again. He retook it because uh, he saw him, he saw him snatching the keys from him. And Jesus, his body was dead, but he rose again from the tomb victoriously and took what belonged to him and what didn't belong to Satan. We have a victorious Christ. You know, when we're in his presence to be able to see the face of the enemy, when, when he saw Jesus resurrected in his glorious body, snatching those keys, uh, imagine that sight. <laughs> so that is what the Lord Jesus Christ died for, to give us victory over the enemy, over Satan and his demons, a victory over sin, and to open a new way for us through his blood. When he redeemed us, he rescued us. And what did he rescue us from? From the power of darkness. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. I rejoice, beloved. How can we not love him? Look at everything he's done for us. How can we not be grateful? How can we not surrender our lives? How can we not submit ourselves to his will with a heart always willing for him and living always always according to the way he wants us to live because that is the right way for our happiness and for our eternal life. Beloved in Christ, I invite you to follow the light, to not love darkness, to not love sin, to not love the pleasures of this world which are only deceiving and temporary. They are lights that will blind you because they are not the true light. Follow Christ, the true light, and you will live eternally. May God bless you abundantly. A big hug to you. Amen. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me blood's atoning then I repented of my sins and won the victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he left me me to victory beneath the cleansing flood I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit Somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me.
streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there a song of victory Victory.